in the workplace, I think there are four categories of people who are thinking about how they will approach retirement. The first are those who are happy to carry on working, they love their job and uh, they want to work for as long as possible, which is great. Uh, the second are those that feel they don't uh, are unable to retire, they don't know when they'll be able to afford to do so. Uh, the third, uh, reaching the lifetime allowance, they're hitting annual allowance, they know that they're in a position to retire early and sadly often that means taking a lot of skills with them. And fourthly, there's a category of people that just simply don't know. And it's very important that we start to address how we help the don't knows to be able to know when they'll be able to retire. So we've seen a couple of things lately that will hopefully uh, help those people. So the first is the Pensions and Lifetime Savings Association have produced a series of retirement living standards that give some general rules of thumb. Now these aren't necessarily about how much you save into a pension, it's about how much you would spend to achieve a certain standard of living in retirement. So their general rules of thumb are if you want the very basic standard of living in retirement, you might need 10,000 a year. The second of those is a moderate, if you want to be able to eat out occasionally but not live too extravagantly, you need about £20,000 a year. And the third is if you really want to be able to start going on those cruises and live a beautiful life, then you need around 30000 So some great rules of thumb that can be used as a starting point for helping people to understand how much they need to be able to spend in retirement to achieve a certain lifestyle. So the second of those is a great idea that's come from Ruston Smith, who's chair of the Tesco Pension Fund and a non-executive director of a number of other companies and pension funds as well, which is the idea that uh, employers can help by providing access to financial advisors. Now, employers have often been very concerned about doing this because they don't know whether they're directing people to good quality financial advice. So Ruston's idea is the opportunity to do some due diligence on financial advisors and be able to uh, audit them over time. So employers and pension schemes can be confident that they're directing people to good quality advice. So one other thing I think that links into both of those points is that uh, people need to be able to get into the habit of thinking that they should be able to get advice and ideally be prepared to pay for it. We wouldn't take out a mortgage uh, without some kind of advice and really looking at how we spend money in retirement is equally if not bigger a sum of money involved. So I think there's also the importance of being able to get people into the habit of thinking they should take advice.